Hey guys, can you see me? Can you hear me? I hope so. Hey, oh great. Hey Iris, hey Melissa, Lisa, May Milo, I think. Justine, hi guys. It's so good to see you. Well, see you. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing okay. I actually just ran in from the mailbox because I got a box. So we'll be doing a little unboxing. Hi, Angela. So uh, just to let you guys know, it's like five o'clock here, uh, Pacific time. I'm just planning to be on until about uh, six. So for like an hour, I just wanted to let you guys know that so we can plan a little bit. Um, hi, hey everyone. Hey, Laura. Uh, so I wanted to do this live stream because uh, when I was on vacation, I really wasn't online too much. Obviously I was, um, you know, just kind of relaxing and trying to unplug a little bit. And I thought with all good intention, I thought I'd come home and just kind of go through my comments and answer any questions or whatever, but I just had so much and I came home to a lot of work also for my my real job, my day job. <laughs> I don't want to say my real job, but my day job. Uh, so anyway, if there are any like questions that you asked me that I didn't get to or whatever, I really wanted to address them. Um, so let me know. I'm going to try and keep an eye on this chat here, um, but I don't want to just kind of keep looking down um, all the time. But it's so good to see you guys. It's actually really good to be home. My vacation was awesome. It was amazing. It was we stayed for seven nights, which we never do. We always kind of do like beach vacations and we'll do like four nights or four days, three nights at the most. Cause there's really only so much like relaxing you can do, but we decided to do this like package. They had, you know, um, like book for five nights and get seven nights. So I was like, let's just do it. Let's just really like chill out. And let me tell you guys, by the end of the last day that we were there, the last full day that we were there, I got up, we were laying in bed and I got up and I was like, my back actually hurts from relaxing, <laughs> from like laying down too much. So I think I like over vacationed a little bit. So uh, anyway, um, oh, hey, Gina, you can make me a moderator if you don't have one. Okay, let's see if I can do that. That would be really helpful. Um, add moderator. Did that work? I hope that worked. All right, I see some questions. So I have I have questions like best concealer, top foundation, uh, things like that. I am going to, hey Bonnie, I am going to do a best of uh, 2018. Um, I've been going kind of back and forth about whether I was gonna do like all these separate videos, you know, best foundation and primer and then best eyeshadow palettes. I think I'm just gonna do one super long mega video um, just cause I don't know, I'm kind of, <laughs> Personally, I'm kind of sick of seeing all these best of 2018 videos popping up. I was really excited in the beginning, and now I'm just like, you know, clicking on the videos and just kind of going to the description box in the list and then like clicking off. Isn't that awful? Um, so I think I'm just gonna do one long video and really, really pare down my picks. So I will answer all of those questions. Uh, when I post that video, I'm hoping to do do it sometime soon and post it actually on Monday. Um, so if not Monday, then I'll probably do it Wednesday because Tuesday is Christmas and I have another video going up actually with um, Mona. We'll be having a video go up on Tuesday. So, <clears throat> so yeah, is Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath better? I just think they're really different. Um, Natasha Denona shadows are just really, really buttery and soft like the glitters really just sort of um, are, are like mushy almost, or like almost like a cream and the Pat McGrath, they're baked. So they feel really hard in the pan, but they have this like really fun payoff. They're just really, really different. I like them both a lot for different reasons. I did not get the new Wayne Goss holiday brush set, but I did want to talk about new releases also and kind of show you some um, things that, uh, would have gone into this, you know, kind of, will I buy it kind of video? Um, I already bought them. <laughs> so I figured why not show you guys and Hey, Georgia Harris, Georgia Harris in the house. I have not tried the Westman Atelier brushes yet. I'm 
you know, these brushes that are, they're so expensive. They're made in Japan, but they're synthetic. It's like, I don't know what to make of them just yet because I purchased a bunch of synthetic brushes from Hakuhoto, which is, I think my favorite Japanese brush maker, pretty much tied with Chikohoto. But if I had to pick, I think I would go with Hakuhoto. And I don't, I don't really like them. You know, I don't find them to be that much better than like Sigma. You know, like, I just don't think that they're that fantastic. So I'm just kind of on the fence about the Westman Atelier because, you know, they are uh, synthetic brushes made in Japan. But, you know, curiosity may kill this cat. So I may end up getting them. Hi, Alex. Um, yes, I'm still using Sisley products. And... Okay, let me just kind of... Let me actually... I have a, I have a box that I just uh, got in the mail. So if you don't mind, we're going to do like a mini unboxing here. Um, I think what this is, is I took advantage of Sephora's sale and then Rouge members got like an extra 20 or 25% off. And I was like, okay, uh, I, I will try. So yes, I have the Tom Ford synthetic brush. Someone's asking me about the new Tom Ford number 13 blender brush that's synthetic. I have it. I'm, I'm still really salty about this, about the change from natural to synthetic. So it's still in the box. I still have to play with it though, but I do want to do a comparison between the two. So you guys uh, can get an idea basically of the new one. And uh, if it's close at all, I'm thinking no. But I don't, I'm trying not to be, I'm trying not to be biased before I go into a review. So, okay, cool. So I got two, sorry for the noise. I got two Natasha Denona products that were, again, on sale at Sephora that I got an additional 20 or 25% off. So I decided to try this teeny tiny blush and glow palette. I mean, I've seen it in store. It's, it's super, super small, but... I travel a lot and I thought that this would be really awesome. It's okay. It's all right. They don't look terribly, sorry, it's probably blown out. It doesn't look terribly pigmented and the blush actually looks really light. I don't know if you guys can even see that, but yeah, that is, um, uh, yes, this live stream will be saved. It'll be on my channel. It'll look like a regular video. I'll probably put a more normal looking thumbnail on there. Um, hi, Clarissa. Love to see a video of your experience with first several synthetic brushes. You know, speaking of Makeup Forever, um, that is the one blender brush that I would recommend, that synthetic brush. I didn't like the Charlotte Tilbury. Um, I do like the, um, it's not this, but it's the Real Techniques Powder Blue line. Uh, their blender brush is, is pretty nice, but I really liked the Makeup Forever, I have to say. But yes, I am going to do a whole video on all those synthetic brushes that I got because I have been playing around with them and kind of getting to know like the synthetic brush and like their properties. And anyway, um, so I have this one do from any, okay, so you really like it. So I thought this would just be great for travel. Um, and then I picked up this Duo Glow. So these are her really glowy blushes and I have the Alba color which is like more of a peach this one is Rayo number two which is more of a pink so um I thought I would give this a shot this is this is really pretty this actually looks very much like the blush that is in oh no here is the duo glow and then here's the blush that's in that little duo Um, I did not pick up the Wayne Goss holiday brush. I actually kind of just like spazzed out and forgot about the release. And when I went on to uh, Beautylish, it was sold out. And I thought, you know what? Probably for the best. It looks super cool. I really like the shape. But I really don't know what I would use that for that I don't like already have. So I don't know. I think they're restocking in January, February, I heard. So I'll, you know me, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it again and kind of revisit it. But for now, I don't think so. Thanks. I did get a tan. I did get a tan in Mexico. I put 45 on the whole time, but the sun there was so, it was so strong. It was so strong. Like we had, um, we had a room that had its own pool, um, which I thought was like, yes, like we are living, but it was really a necessity. Like you could not be outside 
without being in the water for more than maybe five or 10 minutes because it was so brutally hot and humid. Um, and all the restaurants that were outdoors and we would just be sitting there eating like melting and then just like counting the seconds to go back to our room, which was air conditioned. Anyway, so thank you. I'm um, so happy I got uh, a tan um, that doesn't look too horrible. I didn't burn, so the 45 definitely helped. Um, thank you guys. Yes, they do take forever to restock. Hi, Debbie. Um, any lip plumping products you can recommend? Uh, no, I um, am not. Sorry, that was very that was very curt. Uh, I don't. I stay away from lip plumping products because I find them to be one very drying. So usually, they use some sort of like minty action, and I suffer from eczema. And where I got it the worst when I was a teenager, when you know I had it uh, to start with, it was on my upper lip, and you can probably see that like my upper lip like it's not that defined and that's from the eczema. Like this is all basically like scar. So um, so I stay away from any kind of lip product that's like tingling, that's too minty, that uh, has those quote unquote lip plumping, plumping products. So I'm sorry, I don't have any suggestions for you. Um, so the Sonia G face one brush is always sold out. So are we talking about like the face, the face one or the base one? So the base one is the foundation one. And then the face one is like the, oops, it's like the blushy one. I have them all sitting here. Is this what you mean? Oh, this is face two. Wait, which one's face one? I'm like so confused now. Sirens outside. Um, oh, face one. Duh. Sorry. My favorite buffing brush. <laughs> you know, I call this my buffing brush. So I forget that she has this as part of her face line. Um, do I have a good substitute for this? Uh, I don't. I don't. This one is, there's something so special about this one. What I love about the Sonia G brushes, which is why I think I reach for them more than I reach for the Wayne Goss, because people ask me all the time, um, oh, you never talk about Wayne Goss. Don't you like your Wayne Goss brushes? And I'm like, I do. I really like them. They're very nice brushes. But for some reason, I always reach for the Sonia G or my Hakuhodo, um, or even my original Tom Ford brushes. And I think it's because they're more densely packed. The Wayne Goss brushes are very like light um, and fluffy, uh, especially as eye brushes. So um, anyway, back to this one. This just has the perfect density for buffing and I really have not found, I really haven't found anything kind of close. I got this um, Kevin O'Quan um, soft buff powder because the shape looks similar. This one is actually, it's not, it's not denser, but the bristles aren't as soft. Um, these are goat hair as well, but they're definitely a little coarser. But this is like a decent substitute. It's still it's still not as good as the Sony G. If you can't wait, this could be a good one. Um, they're kind of you know similar in shape. So I, I really you know and before this brush came along, I didn't even use finishing powder because no brush I used ever made finishing powder looked look good on my skin because I have such dry skin. Uh, but this really does such a great job. <clears throat> yes. Very disappointed that Tom Ford discontinued the natural hair brushes. I want to say you own the La Mer powder brush. Do you, if you do, do you like it? Yes, I very much like the La Mer um, powder brush. I generally have a decent time with synthetic hair brushes and big like powder brushes. Um, it's eye brushes that I find natural hair to be so like, like years and years like better than um, synthetic hair brushes. Um, but this La Mer brush, it's synthetic and it's great. It's really, really great. I like this. I don't use this for finishing though. I like, I really like a flat top for buffing. <clears throat> this I use to kind of set uh, my face. So I do like this brush. Um, oh, the difference between finishing and setting powder. So setting powder is to really just to set your makeup down. So if you put foundation on, let's say, it will eventually move or transfer like to your phone 
you know, you'll get it on your phone or whatever. So to set it down, you want to use some setting powder. And for me, I really like matte or more matte kind of setting powders because all I want it to do is just set my makeup. I don't want it to add any kind of finish or color or anything. And then a finishing powder for me is something that is like a final step that kind of locks all of my makeup in, but it gives me this like beautiful kind of sheen. So I prefer finishing powders that have like a little bit of a glisten, a glow, a radiance to them. Um, so that is uh, like the how I use those two different powders. <gasps> Hi, Takashi. Hello. Um, do you prefer the original Sonia G or the Pro? I like them all. I like them all. I mean, her original line, they were so unique. Um, but because they're so unique, sometimes it's like, I just want like a regular brush. And that's where her pro line comes in. Her pro line, I feel like are just really like regular shaped brushes. They're not mysterious in any way. You won't pick them up and be like, hmm, what could I use this for? Like they're very attainable. So I, I really, I like them all. If I had to pick handle, like I like the original handle better. I just like the really big, thick handles. <clears throat> Um, okay. Uh, I am going to get the Beautylish Lucky Bag. Sorry, these questions are going by pretty quickly. Um, uh, do you have any bare mineral brushes? I had one bare mineral brushes. I threw it away. I did not like it. It was, um, I feel like Jaclyn Hill recommended it to me. <laughs> not to me personally, <laughs> recommended it. And I went and I bought it. This was probably two or three years ago. And it was like, I was like, this is like terrible. This is crap. So I don't even remember which Bare Minerals brush it was. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it, but I've only tried one. I've only tried one. Um, your thoughts on Sisley Firming Body Lotion. So the firm, Debbie, do you mean the Firming Body Cream? Let me know. Um, the one that comes in the tub. Um, chat about yarn. I'd still love you to do one. Oh, so I apologize. I set up this chat. For some reason, I went back in to kind of like play around with my settings a little bit. And it it like created a whole new like live stream schedule for you guys. Like it posted it to my feed. And it's like a super old, old like stream that I did. I think it was the very first live stream I ever did and it was about knitting. So I apologize. I, I did not mean to post that. I did plan on, on talking about uh, knitting. So I'm sorry. Um, so the BM brushes shed a lot. Yeah, that was, it definitely shed. Um, so some other new releases uh, that I wanted to uh, kind of show you that I got and so that you guys could be aware that a video is coming. And since we're talking about brushes, um, oh, hey, Gina, that's why you were confused. Okay, <laughs> you thought we were gonna be talking about knitting. <laughs> You're like, that's odd. <clears throat> hey, Mona, hey girl, hey. Um, okay, yes, I can do a best of skincare, sure, sure. Um, okay, so I just got this in the mail. Uh, this is sort of like a little treat to myself. I guess you could say this is my Christmas present to myself, but I went ahead and purchased the Suku brush. What is that? Oh, that's the card. The um, Suku brush set off of Selfridges. So, um, <laughs> honey, honey, honey. <laughs> so this brush set, uh, this is the one off of Selfridges. It comes with a case or whatever. This has squirrel hair. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Ignore everything I just said. This brush set I purchased off of Harrods. That's the other department store in the UK that carries Suku. And this brush set has the squirrel hair. Selfridges also has their own exclusive Suku brush set. And those brushes are goat hair. So squirrel hair from Harrods, goat hair from Selfridges. I believe the goat hair Selfridges brushes are also a little bit less expensive. I think there's also fewer brushes, just an FYI. Um, but I wanted to show you guys these brushes because I have been dying, dying to get my hands on Suku brushes, especially the cheek brush. 
that's the blush brush that Lisa Eldridge uses. And every time she pulls it out, I'm like, I just sit there and like semi drool all over myself. Um, but it comes in this really cool, like gold, like drawer pull out type of box, like really beautiful. And then, oh, sorry. And then there is a case that is still wrapped up. And inside, this comes with, probably should have figured this out before I came on, but I didn't. Let's see, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine brushes, and they're all still in the boxes. So I'm just gonna pull out the cheek brush for you, um, but I'm gonna do a whole video on all of these brushes uh, because they are just really, they're just stunning. They're so soft. I mean, there's really something special about squirrel hair brushes. They're very, very fragile. They're really not for the faint of heart, but here is the cheek brush. So it's slightly pinched at the ferrule. And again, this is, I believe, blue squirrel, which is a very soft, soft squirrel. And, oh my God, I have so much crap everywhere. And let me just hold up another brush to compare it to. Um, here is the Wayne Goss O2 brush. So the hairs are like a little bit longer on the Suku. Obviously the shape is very different. This is a round ferrule. Um, do I have any, sorry, let me pull out a different. Ah, here's a good comparison. So this is the Chikahoto cheek brush. I don't remember, I think it's a Z4. I think this is a Z4. So this is small, the Suku is smaller. So you can see the ferrule is narrower. The pinch is, it's a little bit more pinched. This one is oval also, but this one is actually kind of pinched. And then the hairs on the Chikahoto are longer. So I feel like this is a mini version of the Chikahoto. This one is squirrel as well. Both really soft. This feels a little bit softer, probably because it's new, but there you have it. Um, I don't think I have many other comparable ones. Um, I have not purchased any makeup from Suku. It's just the shipping from the UK is pretty rough, I have to say. And um, I don't know much about Suku, but from what I understand, they make very, very small batches. So they'll release something and the first go of it will just be gone. And so it's difficult for me to get it, you know, and then if I talk about it, it's very difficult for you guys to, to get it. So I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever kind of go down the Suku path, but um the Suku Cream Foundation is the best. Uh, yeah, there is a new like rich glow cream foundation. So I think it's their cream foundation that has a little bit of radiance in it. That has my name written all over it, but like all of the colors were already sold out. They had like two or three left on both Harrods and Selfridges. So I was like, uh, maybe not, maybe not. Yes, I will put a link to these uh, Suku brushes in the description for you. Uh, what's your favorite brush to set under eye concealer? So my favorite is the Wayne Goss airbrush. So if I'm going to use something specifically for my under eye, I've already put concealer down and I need to put like powder down, I will use the Wayne Goss airbrush, which is like a flat version actually of this cheek brush. So see how much flatter the Wayne Goss is? So this is the Wayne Goss and this is the Suku cheek brush. They almost look the same this way but then totally different profile. How should squirrel hair brushes be cleaned? Very, very gently. So squirrel hair brushes are very fragile. Uh, you should never use them with creams of any kind because that, that tend, that'll like break the hairs off. You really wanna stick with powders. I would uh, just wipe them clean with, on like a microfiber towel at, as like an everyday kind of a thing maybe once a month, run them underwater and use a very gentle kind of brush cleanser. You can get a bunch on Beautylish, they're all pretty good. I like the clean apothecary one. Um, and, you know, and then, you know, of course, let it dry upside down. You never wanna get water into the ferrule. Uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, if you're professional, you definitely want to disinfect your brushes as a normal kind of everyday user. Um, I will probably disinfect a squirrel hair brush 
maybe once a year. And by disinfect, I may use like some form of alcohol on here. Um, alcohol is very, very drying. So you want to do it like just once and quickly, you know, like dunk it in the alcohol and then quickly wipe it off and then let it evaporate to actually, um, you know, like clean them off and that's it. That's it. So yeah, just be really, really careful with them. When you do wash them underwater, when fiber becomes wet, they become more fragile, which is why you don't want to use these with cream products. So uh, you want to, when the brush is wet, to be very, very gentle with it. You know, when you clean it, you just want to really kind of just sweep it in one direction. You don't want to go back and forth. You don't want to go too circularly. You just kind of want to, you really want to baby it. You really want to baby it. So, you know, if you're not up for the maintenance of squirrel hair brushes, I don't blame you. You know, they're kind of like having a fancy car. It's like always in the shop, that kind of a thing. Like you really have to baby these brushes to get like the most out of them. Um, oh, Iris loves the Wayne Goss holiday brush. Okay, I may have to get it. Uh, hey, Jessica. So Jessica is on. She is a fabulous knitter. Fabulous. The most fabulous knitter I know. Uh, what do you suggest for winter lip care? So I like to exfoliate my lips. Um, and then at night, I like to really just slather on some sort of lip balm. The Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask is a very popular one. I've been using the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Balm. I mean, I just put it on until it's like obnoxious. I go to sleep and then usually I wake up and my lips feel pretty good. But uh, my favorite lip exfoliator is this uh, Frank Body Lip Scrub. It's so good. It smells like coffee. It's like a sugar scrub. So I use this probably twice as much in the winter that I do in the summer, and it really, really helps. And then um, during the day, some of my favorite, I have a lot of lip balms, uh, again, because I have that eczema issue. So I'm really kind of like hyper paranoid about my lips getting too dry, because then I just feel like my eczema is going to come back out. But the Emil Cordon uh, lip balm, these are pretty pricey, but these are some of the best lip balms I've ever used. The scent, the fragrance, the texture, like everything about them, I absolutely love. Um, what else? Oh, you know, actually what's a pretty good uh, like lip sleeping mask is the Sisley Nutritive Lip Balm. I think it's too thick as just a regular lip balm, but as like a lip mask, if you wanna just like put on a thick layer before you go to bed, this is a good one. Kind of wake up and your lips feel like like baby skin. Um, but yeah, I have a whole bunch. The Chanel Hydra Beauty one, that one's really, really good. Um, so what else? Again, sorry if I'm missing, missing any of these. Uh, do you have any recommendations for a good oil cleanser? Um, I use, I tend to use more like balms only because I just find them less messy. When I use like an oil, I just feel like it gets like everywhere. It's like always running down my hands. So my favorite um, face like oil balm is from Retrouve, R-E-T-R-O-U-V-E -E, with an accent. Um, they're American though. They're like, I think made in California, uh, but they have a luminous cleansing elixir. And I think they call it a balm, but it's not like a solid balm. It comes out of a pump. So it's a really kind of like thick, it's like a thick oil, and that is my absolute favorite, favorite cleanser, um, oil cleanser for my face. <clears throat> yes, I love the La Mer brush, uh, powder brush. I really love it. I don't have any of their other ones. I know they have, I think, a foundation brush, which is more dense. It kind of looks like the Kevin Aquan one. It kind of looks like this kind of foundation brush. It's just really dense and kind of like egg-shaped. I have this one, so I never bothered with the La Mer, but the La Mer powder brush is really great. I love <laughs> um, oh, the Tatcha oil is nice. So if I do my whole uh, face cleansing thing and I have like that little like stubborn bit of like eye makeup left, like, you know, if you like a tight line, like a little too heavily and you just have like a little bit of eyeliner on, <laughs> it happens to me. I will use some of the Tatcha oil. I'll put that just on the tip of a Q-tip and I'll run that over any kind of like um, eyeliner or like the base of your lashes where some mascara will just be so stubborn. I'll use the Tatcha oil that way and just, um, it works like a charm. 
Hey, Katie Marie, what's going on? Any recommendations for a really soft brush for packing matte shadow onto the lead and blending it out? So um, I have a lot of favorite packing brushes, especially since Sonia G just came out with a pro set because she has two flat shaders in there that I really love. Uh, the Worker Pro from Sonia G is a great one. And where is the other one? The Builder Pro. So all these brushes. <laughs> <laughs> so here is uh, Worker Pro and here is Builder Pro. So Worker Pro is longer. It's undyed goat hair. This is dyed goat hair. So this you could use with liquids and creams also. Um, so these are really great. The, before she released these brushes, my favorite absolute go-to is the Hakuhodo J5523. And this is undyed goat hair. You can see how much like kind of fluffier it is. So this one to me is just kind of a great, it's like a great middle of the road kind of like shape for any anyone's eyes. I really like this one. Um, and her original workers are great too, but these are much bigger and thicker. They're really thick brushes. So this is the worker one and I absolutely love it. This is like, if I needed to pack like just one eye brush, this would be it because it's so thick, it's almost like a blender too, but it's flat at the same time, so you can work it as a shader. It's just fantastic. Um, and the work, so this is the worker one. The worker two is the same exact brush, but with um, undyed goat hair. So if you use more cream shadows, you asked about mattes, but um, if you use cream shadows by any chance, uh, the worker two, I would recommend. But this would be great for matte shadows because the dyed goat hairs uh, tend to pick up a little bit more than the undyed. <laughs> Uh, have you done the Sawasu La Powder Compact? I took a look at that and um, it just seemed, and you guys know, you guys know, I feel like I'm amongst friends here. Um, I am not that price sensitive, but when I saw those compacts, they seemed really expensive. And I've, I, you know, I didn't want to try something from a brand for the first time and just, um, you know, and just have it be so expensive and like, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> no, I don't plan on purchasing the Sawasu. Um, oh, Taka so Takashi is um, a makeup artist. He's based in, I think he's based in a lot of places, but I believe he lives in New York at the moment. Takashi, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're in New York at the moment. He's saying the Sony G Pro Set Plus, the Pat McGrath eyeshadows are a dream. I have to agree. They're just like a match made in heaven. They're just beautiful. Um, so what brushes are those and what brand is your favorite? Um, sorry, JJ's makeup obsession. Just let me know which brushes you were talking about. The Sonia G ones. These are the Sonia G ones, the ones with the red lacquer handle. And then before I was talking about the Suku, that's the Wayne Goss, the Suku brush set. Did I already put it away? Oh no, I put it up here. The Suku brush set. And this is the Suku cheek brush. Um, so I also wanted to show you, this was also going to be part of a, like, will I buy it? And I ended up buying it. So this is the Tom Ford fucking fabulous, uh, lip color. I just was not planning on getting this. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I don't want to just get a lipstick just for the packaging. Although that was tough. Um, Yes. JJ's makeup obsession. Yes, the red handle is the Sonia G sold on Beautylish. So here is the Tom Ford uh, fucking fabulous lipstick. So it's this all black case, which, you know, totally, totally speaks to me. Speaks to me. This is like my dream packaging from Tom Ford. But I was like, it's just, you know, it's just a red lipstick and whatever. I, of course, I tried it on in store and I was like, yep, yeah, I have to have it. It is. Um, like um, just a middle of the road red that leans just a little orange. Like so many of my orangey reds that I have are very kind of orange. They're very, very orange. Um, so yeah, I just had to get it, but let me swatch this for you. So there is, sorry, I'm gonna back away from my lighting so you can get a better view of this. So that is the fucking fabulous Tom Ford lipstick. It's so pretty. So anyway, I got this. Um, 
But one of my will I buy it's is, I don't know if you guys saw, he's releasing a lipstick with his Lost Cherry perfume. And I think it's called Lost Cherry. And I can't even make out from the pictures like what the color is of the lipstick. I have a feeling it's like a pinkier version of this, a cooler version. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get that. I don't, is any... Is anyone interested in that? <laughs> Let me know. Um, wow, looks a lot less orange swatched. Yeah, it looks um, it looks like pretty red. And then like in the light, it was when I saw like, oh, it does lean like a little bit orange. So it's a pretty, for like a really just kind of straight up red, it's actually pretty different, um, at least from what I have. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. And by the way, it's pretty long lasting. It's a cream like satin kind of finish. It's not a matte, uh, it's not a matte finish at all. So I thought, you know, I'm going out to dinner. Um, I went and had sushi. So I had like really oily fish, soy sauce, everything, the whole thing. And it stayed on. I went home and I still had like all of my lipstick on. So really good uh, lasting power for this lipstick, by the way. Um, doing so many fragrance inspired. Yeah, they are, they are. Um, so this was one of my will I buy it's that I bought. Um, and then I think I have actually Mona, Glam Dr. Mona Khan. This one's for you. So totally wasn't planning on buying this. And I had this on my list of like, will I buy it? And I saw it in store and I was like, I'm going to get it. This is the Charlotte Tilbury goddess cleansing ritual miracle spa in a jar duo. She has the world's longest names for her products. So this is like the dual cleanser. Um, and if the ladies working at Nordstrom, they, they like, didn't, they didn't know, they thought this was a mask. And I'm like reading it. And I'm like, I think this is a cleanser. And so they were like, Oh, it does seem like it's a cleanser. Anyway, uh, it seems to have a citrus theme and I really like citrus and the fragrance and, um, the Tilbury is already out. Yeah. I got these at Nordstrom, by the way. I got the fucking fabulous at Neiman Marcus, although I think that's been out and I think that's everywhere. Um, but I got this uh, cleansing duo from Nordstrom. So each bottle is 2.5 fluid ounces. So they're not huge, which is fine. I believe the set was like 42, 45. Mona, please um, correct me if I'm wrong. And okay, so this is a radiance cleanse. And you're supposed to massage it onto your face and then take a muslin cloth, wet it with warm water, apply that to the face to melt off your makeup. And then like kind of like a steam action, um, press the muslin cloth onto your skin and then kind of like wipe it away. So that is a uh, cleansing goddess cleansing ritual one. And then goddess cleansing ritual two is, has more of a charcoal base and you're supposed to massage this onto a wet face until it turns white. Uh, again, wet a muslin cloth with warm water and then wash it off. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. I am going to tell you, though, I have not had very good luck with Charlotte Tilbury, like skincare. Her magic cream line totally gave me a rash, like all over my face. There's something in there that my skin doesn't like. Um, and then like a lot of her base products actually have done the same thing. I'm trying to think what it was. Maybe it was like her goddess. Does she have like a clay mask? Maybe that bothered me too. So anyway, I just, I thought I would give this a shot. I read over the ingredients. There didn't seem to be anything too out of the ordinary. Um, so I thought, why not? Why not? But this is going to be my last go with Charlotte Tilbury skincare. If this doesn't work out, then I think I'm going to give up. I'll just stick to her uh, makeup. Um, I love that word fucking just rolls right off your tongue naturally. I have, um, I have a potty mouth. I really try and keep it PG on my channel because you know, I don't want to offend anyone. There are kids in the room, all that stuff. And I don't think it's necessary to curse <laughs> when I'm trying to make a point. Um, but in real life, I have a potty mouth. And uh, like someone just said, you know, uh, Sharon, if you live in New York, it's just, you just have to, you just have to. I mean, you're cursing at strangers like all day long. So anyway, <laughs> um, what is the white inner highlight on your eyes down your nose? Oh, so um, the inner highlight on my eyes. So I'm wearing the new Tom Ford white suede quad. 
So I have the light shade, where is it? Sorry, let me get it out. Uh, so it's the new quad. I have a video up. It went up this afternoon sometime. And this is what I have on the inner corners. Sorry, this guy. Um, but down my nose, I have the Tom Ford Glow Drops. I have the liquid sky uh, down my nose. It is whew, this one. It's the white one. So I have that like here down my nose and then I have it. Um, I also have powder highlight on, but I have this on underneath there. So that's probably what you're seeing going on there. Extra um, Balm Rinse, this is heaven. Oh, okay, Takashi, I will try that. The Bobbi Brown Extra Balm Rinse. I think I've seen that. I think that comes in a huge like glass jar and it's like a bomb. Okay, I will try that. Um, do you read? <laughs> Seems like you'd have great book recommendations. I um, I read weird things. I'm just gonna tell you, I have like a kind of a weird obsession with like serial killers and anything that's kind of like on the macabre side. Um, I also like anything that's like kind of creepy Victorian England. Um, so. <laughs> I don't know. If you're interested in that stuff, I can tell you about what I have been reading, um, but you probably are not interested, but let me know. Um, am I planning any more collabs with Kate the Great? We don't have anything in the works, but I would love to collab with her. <clears throat> we text all the time. She's hysterical. We text all the time. Um, and yeah, we just kind of end up talking about life more than we talk about makeup, I think, and like YouTube and stuff. Um, but anyway, she's awesome. She is awesome. And the next time she's here in Vegas, when she comes, she's like very busy with family. So I haven't been able to actually meet up with her here. I met up with her in New York and I'm actually going back um, to New York in January. So I will be there for work. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to see her then. Um, if you like creepy, try Patricia Cornwall's Ripper. Oh, did I read that? I may, no, no, I haven't read that, but I will, I will put that on my list. I do like her. I have read some of uh, some of her other things. Okay. Um, so yes. So I'm gonna give this a shot, and um, I may as well show you what else I got while I was at Nordstrom. So I had all these Nordstrom notes, like just burning, burning a hole in my pocket. So I did get more brushes. <laughs> so these are two Trish. McAvoy brushes and she is like one of the holdouts. I, I talked to the essay that was there and we're like, these are still natural haired, right? Like she's not switching over. And she was one of the first ones to come out with a whole like natural hair brush line, like way back in the day and uh, her and Bobby Brown. And um, the essay was like, oh yeah, she's, she is not going that, like synthetic. Like this is her jam. So I was like, awesome. Um, I am so excited. And I got, what number is this? Her handles are clear, so it's really hard to read the printing on there. Oh, this is the 29 Tapered Blending. And this is goat hair. But I just thought the shape was kind of promising. It's a little bit, I think it's just from the packaging. When I wash it, I think it will, like right now it looks a little flat. I think it's gonna open up because the ferrule is actually round. It's not pinched at all. And where is my Tom Ford? So this is my Tom Ford 13. I was kind of hoping it was kind of the same. It's a little bit shorter, which I like. I feel like every time I go out and get a blending brush in attempts to imitate this one, the bristles are too long and then I feel like I don't have control. So I am excited for this one. Definitely very excited for this one. So that is the 29 tapered blending from Trish McAvoy, has a clear handle. And then I got, uh, the number, jeez, the number 19 small lay down. Um, oh, Trish McAvoy brush bath for your brushes. Oh, okay. Of course she makes a brush bath. I didn't even think to take a look at her brush cleanser. That, I think I'll do that the next time I'm there. Uh, so again, this is the number 19 small lay down. So this is a super duper flat shader brush. Small, I meant to say super duper small flat shader brush, not flat. Um, 
it's like it's like a shorter version of the Wayne Goss number seven. Um, let me see. It's smaller than the Chikahoto GSN nine. And this also is, oh, you know what? This is Sable. And I love, love Sable hairbrushes. Um, so I'm excited about this. Let's see. This is a Sable hairbrush. So this is the Isam W21. I love this brush. This is uh, also Sable hair. And it's a little bit narrower, a little bit skinnier, a little bit taller than the Trish McAvoy. So I'm really excited for this. I All the shaders that I have tend to be like bigger. So when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is really nice. This is really nice. Cause I really don't, I don't have that much eyeshadow space. So I thought that this would be really handy. So I got those two brushes as well. Sorry, this is turned, ooh, this is turned into like a haul video, <laughs> which is not what I meant, but anyway. Um, I do own Syrah brushes. I love Syrah brushes and I love them so much that they're tucked away and I don't use them that much. I have to like pull them out and use them. But his like angled one, I love. Oh, here's his face brush. And then, so these I had out. This is the cheek brush. Love this. Love, love, love this. Squirrel hair. This is the face brush. Squirrel hair as well. Love it. So, so soft. Um, so yeah, I do love the Surratt brushes. They're really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. So soft. Um, my hair is so long. Yeah, my hair is really long. I get my hair cut about once a year. <laughs> you know, people always um, comment on my hair. Uh, usually it's good, which is great. Thank you guys. You know, it's like, oh, you have, you know, you don't dye your hair. That's so great. Or it's usually the first thing people notice about me. Um, and I think most of the time people think I'm making some sort of statement. I'm not, I'm just lazy. Like I've never really spent that much time on my hair. So the idea of having to go to the salon, like, I don't know, like once every six weeks is such a turnoff. Like I can't imagine anything more torturous. So yeah. It's time though. It's been a while. My hair is like, is like really long. It's really long and it's really hot too. Um, best blush brush. Uh, I really love the Tom Ford, but this is the natural hair, which they don't have anymore. Um, I think after that, I do love the Surratt. I really do. And I just got this um, Suku cheek brush. So this could be a contender, that Chikahoto Z, I think Z4, I don't know if I'm remembering this correctly. This is really great also. It's a little bit bigger. So this is really great. Um, yeah, yeah, but I love the Tom Ford one because this is um, goat hair. All the other ones, other ones that I mentioned are squirrel hair. So this picks up a lot of products. So if you have one of those like weird formulas, maybe it's baked, or it has like a little bit of a hard pan on top. This works perfectly. It picks up a lot of product. Um, so I really, really love this brush. Ugh, I'm still, I'm still upset that they went <laughs> synthetic. Um, yeah, this regular Suku blush brush has a round ferrule. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one is um, oval. It's not round. Uh, Justine, my workout regimen. So um, regimen would be an overstatement, but I do, I go to Orange Theory Fitness. I used to do a lot of running. Um, I, you, I ran in the New York City Marathon. So I used to do a lot of running, you know, like a lot of running, um, but that's all I did. I didn't stretch. I didn't do, I mean, I did weights every once in a while, um, but that was it. And so anyway, eventually I hurt myself and I couldn't I can't really run that much anymore. Um, so I had to find something else to do. So now I do Orange Theory Fitness, which is it's basically like a cardio hit kind of workout, but you're on the treadmill, you're on the water rower, and you do weights and stuff. And it's a great, great workout. And actually, I went this morning for the first time since I got back from vacation, and it totally kicked my ass, like totally kicked my ass. They, it's called orange theory because they want you to be in the orange zone, which is like your heart rate supposed to be between 
I think like 83 and 92 percent of your 100 percent heart rate uh, of your max heart rate. And um, the ideal is to be, I think, like to get around 12 minutes in this zone. It's, you know, then you'll continue burning, all that kind of stuff. That's that's the theory behind it all. Um, I got like 45 <laughs> minutes. And I usually do a lot because I do, I really like to push myself in class, but that was a lot. I was like panting, like, like a feral animal the whole time. Even I, and I went with my husband, he was like, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, I ate so much on vacation. So um, anyway, so that's what I do. I go to Orange Theory Fitness. I try and go three times a week. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four, uh, but I try and go for three. That seems to be my sweet spot. If I work out too much, I develop a gigantic, gigantic appetite. And so it ends up being like not worth it. So if I go like four or five times a week, which I've been known to do, like I, I'm a very habitual person. All of a sudden I start eating like I'm a growing boy and I'm like, this is not good. So um, if I kind of stick to around three times a week, that seems to be my sweet spot. I'm burning the most calories, but I'm not like, you know, needing McDonald's. Um, so yeah. Anyway. Um, I could talk a lot about actual, about fitness and workout, but I won't bore you <laughs> with that now. Maybe I'll save that for get ready with me. Um, so we've got about nine minutes left. Is there anything else that I got? I did get another Chanel lip gloss. It's not new though. So I wasn't going to bother showing you guys, but when Mona was here and we did a live stream, I, they didn't have, uh, we went to Chanel, we got some stuff and I did get a couple lip glosses that I really liked, but they didn't have my first choice lip gloss. So, um, I got the one that I wanted from Nordstrom and this is in the shade 804. Why don't they ever have the names on here? Just 804. Oh, Rose, Rose Naif, Naif, N-A-I with is something on top, F. Uh, 804. And so this is the color. You can't see that. There we go. That is the color. NARS orgasm blush worth the hype. I don't like the orgasm blush. I just, I don't like the color. I think it's like too, I can't describe it. It's too, I don't know. Anyone else out there who does not like the orgasm blush, maybe you can actually eloquently say what I'm trying to say. Um, could you please talk about how oh, only some people got the Rouge $100 reward? Oh, so the $100 reward, that's the reward that you get for, I think, 2,500 points. Um, they only make it available sometimes. So I check Tuesday and Thursday mornings, or sometimes I'll get like an email like, oh, we've updated or, um, yeah, like updated our rewards bazaar, I think is what I call it the Bazaar Boutique, Rewards Bazaar. And so I'll pop on and they'll have it there for a little while. They'll have like $100 reward for 2,500 points. And you can sit there and you can add it to your basket and check out and add it to your basket and check out. You don't have to buy anything. Um, and so do that as many times as you want. Um, but it really only pops up for maybe 15 minutes once or twice a week. You just have to catch it. Um, but there are caveats with these rewards. So if you use that gift card that they end up sending you, or it's like a ends up being a promo code, um, you can't return anything that you purchase with that. And uh, you have to use it within 90 days. So every time it pops up, I only get like one or two because I'm afraid, you know, I'm not going to be able to use it within 90 days. So anyway, that's the $100 reward thing. Um, Gets okay, so was 12 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay, yeah. So here it was uh, like 9 a.m. And I've seen it Thursday. I, the first time I got some, it was Thursday. And then the second time I got some, it was on Tuesday. Um, and so it's not right at like 12 p.m. Eastern. It's not like right on the dot. So you have to sit there if you have time and like refresh it. And it'll eventually like pop up. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Jouer blush or Chanel's, I love Chanel blushes. I do, I really like Chanel blushes. Um, I have not tried the Jouer blush. So that's it. Um, so yeah, yeah, anything else guys? The holiday, oh, okay, 
Okay, let's talk about this. So the Chikahoto um, holiday brushes. It's the blue set that they just announced. I'm going to see if I can I share my screen. Hold on. I feel like I should be able to share my screen here. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Yes, blue. All right, I'm going to pull it up on my phone and see if you guys can see it through the camera. But it is, although you guys are all probably sitting there pulling it up yourselves. Um, so these are what the handles look. Oh, these are what the handles look like. So they're blue, they're metallic, they're shiny, and then they have a gold. Uh, looks like Mount Fuji. Looks like like a drawing of Mount Fuji with some whoop, with some clouds over there, I'll like on top. And it looks like there's only four brushes. I think three are face and one is eye. So that's make that makes it very tempting for me because I find a lot of brush sets that I'm interested in. They always throw in like a lip brush and like an eyebrow spoolie, and I'm like, I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to spend money on those. Um, so this one does look really promising, but I have to say, I think this was a couple years ago. They came out with a set that was red and it had like flowers on there. It was really pretty. And I was still living in New York at the time and they had a release party uh, for the brushes that you could go as like a quote unquote influencer. I don't even know how I got invited to it because uh, I wasn't doing this at that point. And um the brushes felt really light, like Chikahoto, br Chikahoto brushes are very light, but because these are plastic for some reason, it's okay. When they're metallic and light, they just felt really tinny. And I don't know, I just didn't really like the feel of them. And I'm afraid that these may have that same feel. It's probably why I also really love Sonia G brushes. They have this, this nice weight to them, like they're balanced, right? And you know, they're not too substantial that they're heavy, like you don't want to use them, but you feel like you're holding something where Chikahoto brushes are very, very like light. And I'm sure some people prefer that. I just personally prefer something that has a little more something to it. Like Wayne Goss brushes that are made uh, from Chikahoto, same thing. They're just, they're really, really light. Um, so that is my personal hesitation <laughs> with the holiday brush set, which I know is really, um, specific, <laughs> really, really specific. Uh, okay, let's see. Recommend the Giorgio Armani Quad and Avant Premier or the White Suede? So, This is the Avant Premier. It's a totally different color story from the white suede. I I really love this. I mean, I'm like a neutrals, brown, coppery eyeshadow fan. If I had to choose between the two, I would get this because this formula is great too. Um, I don't think that there's enough of a difference to make a decision based on formula. So it's really, I think, based on um, like the color schemes. They, I also have the Armani Paparazzi. And this one is a little bit closer to the white suede because it's a little bit cooler and it has this like bluish color. Between this and the Tom Ford, I would get the Tom Ford. I don't think, like this shadow was fine, but it wasn't as pigmented. It didn't go on quite as beautifully as the Tom Ford one. So between those two, I would pick the Tom Ford, uh, but between the Tom Ford and this one, I'd probably pick this one because these colors are just, I don't know. They just speak to me a little bit more than the Tom Ford. Rank TF quads. I'm going to come out with a video doing that. I'm just waiting for all the TF quads to be released because there's actually I heard from a little birdie, there's two more coming out for sure. And they're both gonna have that wet dry formula. Um, I don't know when they're coming out and you know, they're very, very hush hush about stuff. So I don't know when they're coming out. I'm kind of waiting for that. If I don't hear any more news about them in a couple of weeks, then I'll do, I'll just go ahead and do a ranking of Tom Ford quads, which is probably gonna be like the worst or hardest video I'll ever have to make. Um, anywhere out there like DNG makeup, well, I'm kind of on a DNG like 
they're like on a timeout because of that whole debacle that they had in Shanghai where they made really awful racist uh, remarks. So I'm, I'm just not, I'm just not going to partake in Dolce and Gabbana at the moment. And this is not the first time that they've come out and said really unsavory things. It's been going on for a while and you know, they're, they're in the fashion world and I'm, 99.9% sure that they have some sort of substance abuse problem. And it's probably just the rantings of like an overcoked, you know, fashion designer who's terribly fabulous. Um, But, you know, it's just, yeah, they just, it's not, look it up, look up the Dolce & Gabbana, look up Dolce & Gabbana, uh, Shanghai, and you'll see all of these articles. And all the articles will also talk about some of the past things that they've said. And it just, you know, after a while, you're just like, okay, they just need to, they, they need to take a vacation more than seven days too. <clears throat> um, so yeah, shenanigans, that's the perfect word. DNG shenanigans. Um, yeah. So, all right. Well, it's six o'clock, you guys. I'm sorry, this really did not end up being much about talking about new releases, except turn into a haul. I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. Um, and I hope I got to answer at least some of your questions. Um, and, oh, there is something I did want to talk about. It's a new Dior, cause Mona actually mentioned this in her live stream. I have someone on Instagram that's been asking me about it. Dior just came out with new foundations on Nordstrom. I have to look at the ingredients. I don't know if I'm going to be buying and testing it because I haven't had luck with Dior foundations. And there was one sentence in the Radiant Foundation, which is the one that I would get, not the matte one, the Radiant one that said it was like shrink your pores. And I'm like, I wonder if there's alcohol in there. Like, I wonder if it's going to have like this weird tightening effect, which I don't like. So anyway, uh, just wanted to address that new release, the Dior Foundation. So that I'm on the fence about that. I'm just going to have to take a look at the ingredients and I will get back to you. Um, yeah, Iris, I felt the same way. I didn't like, it's that backstage one that I didn't like. It was so, it was so drying. It was so drying. Um, so anyway, uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Um, I hope we would, I hope I didn't go off on too much of a tangent. I will try and do, I'm actually going to try and do live streams more often, maybe get on a schedule and have an actual topic to talk about. So happy holidays, you guys. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry, Merry Christmas. Everyone have a lovely new year. Be safe. And I will, I'll see you tomorrow probably in a new video. Bye.